Uh, well, hello, this is Nathan with SobeSource.com, and today we're talking about the NRF24 LO1s. Um, I, these are from ICStation.com. Um, I have used ICStation.com before, and uh, so this is my first product from them. Um, I have to say, I am very impressed. Um, I, I got these within, actually I think it was about six days, so a little bit less than a week. So... And just looking at it when they arrived, I was amazed. These things are a little piece of art. Um, I purchased a lot of components from um, from the Fleabay or uh, um, eBay, if you will. <laughs> um, like here's and so like with these chips, I've used the NRF 24s quite a bit in the past. Um, but um, um, like I said, I've uh, on the most of the components that I've used have mostly came from eBay. And like you can see here, this is a set from eBay. Um, that the uh, quality of these are just you know um, they're, me um, they're mediocre at best which is what you'd expect to get for you know what you pay um, they they work I can say that yeah you know so they work um, these are you know like I said these are just just beautiful I mean just both sides these are absolutely gorgeous every component is just flawless um, on nice gold plated contacts if they're not gold you got me fooled um, so when I received these I I chose not to get them on with the antennas. Um, you can get these with the antennas from icstation.com. Um, but I like to, you know, like put them through the full paces. I've also, I've actually had these for a minute. Um, I really wanted to put these through their full paces. I wanted to write some software to share with you folks. So, um, like a new piece of software that not a lot of people have or have done with these. You know, that way I can really a I'm, I'm like pushing to their limits, figure out where the breaking point is, and just see how good the range is as compared to the other ones that I've had before. That way I can give a proper review. Um, so first off, I find that the antennas for these are pretty standardized 2.4 gigahertz antennas. I have a stack of routers that people give me, you know. So whenever someone sends me their their, um, their old broken stuff, I'm like, yay, sweet parts. I just tear, or, or free parts. I just um, just tear them down and and put them in the parts bin for days like this. Um, so like these are just two antennas I had lying around. Um, these are off old routers, like I said. I think one of them is a D-Link, the other one's, I don't know, probably a Belkin or something. It's really irrelevant, but they are 2.4 gigahertz antennas. So uh, these screw on here just like this. Uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, you know, these do come in all different sizes and flavors in the same band. Um, like this thing here, you can see it's kind of a standing kind. It has the Mount. These are great for remote mounting away from the IC if you have a tight compartment or, or you are trying to see how far they go based on line of sight or something of that nature. Um, they also come in on little larger ones like a base. As you see here it has the uh, wire and it has a base and you can put a larger antenna on it. I think this one's off like a uh, commercial router or something. I, I don't, really don't remember. It's just one of the spare ones I had lying around. But uh, these work great with these chips as well. Um, as long as there's the right, um, you know, the antenna is made for the right bandwidth, and in this case, it's, it's the 2.5 gigahertz. So also, I want to show you how I wire these up on the breadboard. I've seen a lot of people who are just running, uh, like, female to male pins and just wiring them indirectly and, and just letting them flop around. That, to me, just seems messy. Not that I'm saying my wires are clean, but I like a nice sturdy platform where they're not going to be moving and in my way all the time. So what I find is a double pin header, just like this, um, you cut them. To where you have four pins and you know snip them, <clears throat> and then if you bend them in kind of a V shape on your breadboard, they fit nicely right there between where the ICs would go. Um, make sure I get these in there correctly so that I can put it back together. <clears throat> yeah, just like that. So it fits right in there, and you have a nice solid platform to build off of. And then these things here <clears throat> will just pop in like so, just like that. Um, I find this handy, especially since I've been swapping these out with the cheaper ones going back and forth to compare. Um, I will say that <clears throat> these though, are not external antennas. These give me a range of, at best, maybe 30 feet. Um, uh, mind you, my lab is in a second story of a solid stone building, like big, you know, it's a big, huge brick, not brick, but it's stone, solid stone. These I can get to maybe my front door before I have total packet loss. Um, these, I'm just going to say, I left one in my lab, walked out the, of my 
building with my laptop, made it a block and a half down the road, and I still had like 98% on, on pack of success rate. Um, so what's the limit of these? I don't know. I figured a block and a half was enough to prove the point, um, and that's not line of sight, mind you. So, and that's going through big brick, or not, why do I keep saying brick? Uh, stone. Big, huge stone. I've, I don't know, like, whoever made this place must have been a mason, because they didn't even use brick. They used, like, raw, big, uh, stones, and then, you know, you know, yeah, I'm like, concreted them together and built a place. Anyway, so, that's irrelevant to this. Um, so first of all, let me get right into one of the ways that I tested these, um, one, I wanted to do a project with these that nobody else had done, or at least no one else has shared, because I am all about open source and I like to share. So if I'm going to show how these work, I want you to be able to use the same software that I've written at home, which you'll be able to get from my website, sobesource.com. So just get right into this. This one here is plugged into my laptop. Um, this one is plugged into my desktop. You'll hear him plugging in here. Um, you'll also notice that I have a mega on one side and an anno on the other. Um, this this is to prove a I've, I've seen some places where people were like oh well if you use different microprocessors the speeds are different and they don't communicate uh, that's uh, that's all bullocks these work just fine together the only thing that's crucial as far as the mega goes is make sure you actually use the correct pins of the mega because they are different from the nano which in my software you'll find out that it shows you the pin out for the differences and um, so cut to the chase you'll see that I've actually implemented a two-way communication system um, you'll see the each side has a button and an LED, a button and an LED, and the software is written where you can have multiple buttons and multiple LEDs on each side. Um, when you hit a button, the corresponding or the opposite side, it will control it wirelessly. And then this button goes the other direction. So it works in both directions. How's that? Isn't that just awesome? So I just can't speak highly enough of these chips. Um, these chips are just just great in so many different ways. Um, one, for example, these are just basic. They run off the built-in amplifier, if I could even call it an amplifier, um, off the actual IC itself. So whatever amplification you get is what it's got. That's it. Um, these actually have amplifier circuits built in, which are settable in the software, so you can turn the um, the DB down um, for close proximity like this, which I should do, but I haven't done. Um, and also, these have noise filtering on board. That's right. These things can actually pick, or like they can clear the signal if there is any. Uh, noise on the channel or close to the channel within a certain degree and actually filter them out so you get a nice, nice clean signal between the two. Um, so you have an amplifier and you have a a filter built in. That, you know, my mind just exploded. <laughs> so you should definitely check them out. Um, um, icstation.com. Here's a little bit of a preview, just some of the stuff on their homepage. Um, the prices are within cents of eBay. Um, plus, I mean, as I've shown you, the build quality is superior in every way. Plus, and this is the best part, if you're purchasing stuff for that price, it, and plus, like, um, like free shipping, as you see here, and you actually have a company to get a hold of. I mean, wow. I mean, of, 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 you know, versus some individual somewhere in the world, you know, you actually have a company, and this is a company that sold a lot of people a lot of stuff. So this isn't just some, you know, no-name place. You know, they sold a lot of stuff to a lot of people, and you can't get better credibility than that. I mean, I've bought stuff from other places. I won't say the name of Element <clears throat> 14, and the uh, prices are ridiculous. Now, the but um, the build quality with them is pretty much on par here for eBay prices. It's a no-brainer. You can't beat that. And. Uh, so, if you're interested in the uh, two-way communication with the NRF24s, and you're welcome to check out my website. I'll have some more information there about these pinouts and um, my code as well commented. If you have any questions, just let me know. And so that'll be it for today. Um, this is Nathan with SobeSource.com. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.